The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from Dallas Cowboys Training Camp in Oxnard, California. Hurts down, streaks in, streaks in, touchdown! Parsons has second. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris, John Mashoda and Kyle Yeomans. For the first time in the 2023 season, we welcome you to Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. We are on site here in Oxnard, California for training camp 2023. We've got some new players to talk about. We've got some new hosts to talk about as well. I'm Kyle Yeomans back here for what is now going to be my fourth season on Talking Cowboys, which is crazy for me to, to say because I still feel like the, the newbie sometimes around these parts. We've got Nick Harris, who's going into season. He's in number one, but you've been on the show a couple times before. we got Chris Beam in the back who's been here forever. But I do want to welcome to the show for the first time ever, Mr. John Machota from The Athletic. What's going on, John? Not man. Living the dream. I don't know that there's anybody that loves coming out here more than I do. You might love it as much, but I don't know that anybody loves it more than I do. What's, what's your favorite part about being out here? I should say the weather, but for me... It, it's really the social media because mm. the policies that they allow mm. out here are a lot better. So being able to post videos and things like that, <laughs> yeah. um, that's probably my, my actual favorite part. But, I mean, yeah, obviously this weather is incredible, and I love that they come out here for that. But I love the social media aspect. What is uh, what, what year is this for you? That's a good question. Um, so I didn't get hired full-time until 2014, but I was coming out to camp. I started coming out to camp in 2011, but it was like one of those things. I was at the Dallas Morning News yeah. where I would only come out for like maybe a week. And then after I obviously got hired full-time, then it was, you know, the entire camp and all, all, all every, you know, home and road game. So uh, every year since 2014, I'd say, yeah. That's awesome. Nick, yeah. so, I mean, this is your first camp, first impression so far. And it's been fantastic. I will say the weather <laughs> is fantastic. It's a much different much different array than what we get in Dallas. But, yeah, it, it's been fun so far. Hasn't been short of any drama, and I feel like I'm getting the full experience so far. That's the that's the tease of all teases. It hasn't been short of drama already. We've got some things to talk about. But before so, I mean, this is a bit of a switch up. Of course, uh, for those of you who normally tune in to Talking Cowboys, we will not have Patrick Walker on the show this year. And he makes the jump to the break, and congrats to 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 pat for that and really excited to see him continue to grow in, in his role at dallascowboys.com we still love patrick and he's already told me today he was like i'm gonna pull a nate newton and just pop in <laughs> randomly which is what ends up happening uh, from time to time when we're at the star and i'm sure nate will probably do it while we're out here as well we will have isaiah stand back on the show throughout training camp he should get here this weekend so that'll be a lot of fun going into next week we'll have john on for every episode during training camp and then of course nick is on full time uh when we get back as well but I want to start with getting to know you guys a little bit more. So I want a, a quick 10-second resume, and then what was the biggest thing you did this summer going into training camp? Not football-related. I want, I, want I want to know what John did this summer. For me, probably the best thing was uh, I went back to Michigan. I'm from right outside of Detroit, Warren, Michigan, and uh, that's kind of the area where Eminem's from. And so <laughs> I was back up there, and some friends – I uh, wanted to go to this Ed Sheeran concert at Ooh. Ford Field. And uh, during the concert, Eminem came out and did a couple songs. So he hasn't toured in a while, and I'm a big fan, and that was a surprise. So I would say that's probably, you know, the coolest thing. And then when I got down here, though, I got I got down here last Thursday. Mm -hmm. I usually try and come in a few days early and uh, went to an Angels game. So nice. uh, Otani pitch. And so that was that was cool, too. Um, but, yeah. Big baseball guy? Uh, it's it, It's third. There's clearly, like, like my favorite sport to play has always been basketball, mm. but the cover it's football and it's not even close. But football and basketball are the top two, but baseball is third. But there's a big drop off to anything else. So there's kind of like that core three. Nice. Um, but even if I wasn't a huge baseball fan, it just the whole Otani pitching and playing at a ridiculous level. It's incredible. At, yeah. That I just it's like kind of like the Steph Curry thing. Like I don't I is that really going to change the game to where like you never you know all these guys are going to start doing you got to be really good to be able to do that how many guys are going to be able to pitch and hit an elite level so i just kind of feel like it's a 
a rare time for that. So it's a spectacle. That's, yeah. that's the best way to put him. <laughs> yeah. So and you're with the athletic now. Uh, it, you, you talked about not being full time until 2014. How did you kind of get into the business, and, and how did you end up at the athletic? So um, being, I grew up a Detroit sports fan, and in uh, I graduated high school in 2000, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do professionally <laughs> after that. Uh, I actually went to community college for, and got my associate's degree in law enforcement. I thought I was going to be a police officer. Nice. And then when that was finishing up, the Pistons were starting to roll. And that's like 03, 04, 05-ish there. And I was like, I just couldn't consume enough about the team. And I was like, man, that would be such a fun job to cover a team. And so I ended up going to Wayne State in Detroit. And a lot of the stuff I got, the community college stuff, didn't transfer over <laughs> school-wise. So it was like starting over. So I was kind of behind, you know, your friends are all graduating at different times. But it was the best decision I ever made because – my dream was to cover like the Tigers, the Lions, or Pistons. I never thought I'd get a chance to cover the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, an editor of mine, when I was uh, freelancing at the Detroit Free Press, he got a job at the Dallas Morning News. And so uh, he called me one day and was like, hey, if uh, you're willing to come down here, I don't have anything full time, but uh, you know, I can find work for you for sure. And that was great. That was in 2011. And the Rangers were rolling. The Mavs obviously won the championship. Uh, you know, they're just a lot of, and then the Cowboys are always of interest. So I got to go out to Valley Ranch and really was I always say it's, it was like a drug you know like I was like I, I just want to cover the Cowboys like oh, I yeah, loved yeah. being around I loved the interest of it and I was at that in my mind I was like I'm just going to keep showing up until eventually somebody hires me full time you know and that um, thankfully to uh, Derek Eagleton Dallas Cowboys uh, they offered me a job uh, to cover the team for the for the website and when that happened the Dallas Morning News was like no 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 we'll hire you full time we'll hire you full-. and so that it helped me, obviously. So, uh, and then in uh, 2019, I ended up going to uh, to the athletic and been having a blast there ever since. That's awesome. You do great work. I mean, thank you. I've I've always followed John. Even whenever I was in small market radio, I was on ESPN Central Texas. You were on our morning show yeah. almost every week. I yeah. would hit up John. I'd be like, "Listen, John, I, I need you on the show. We got to get you some Cowboys talk." So, yeah. uh, had it's it's great to be able to kind of work with you on air. We've worked behind the scenes quite sure. a bit, but uh, on air is going to be a, a whole new level and I think it's going to be great for this show and, and I'm excited about it and then I'm excited to see what Nick Harris has in store for for us this year I, I I've <laughs> not I've told, me no. I've told people yeah I've told people this before but and Nick and I go back pretty far too but nobody has seen the swag that Nick Harris has yet like it, it's just barely <laughs> scratching honestly both of these guys I'm looking at the shoes uh, both of you guys got great shoe game but Nick, I mean, tell me what you did this summer and what you're most looking forward to going into this training camp. Uh, I would say my one highlight from the summer non-football related, took a took a New York trip with one of my roommates and had a fantastic time out there. It was nice. a couple of weeks and, you know, watched some baseball, went and saw the uh, old polo grounds where it used to be. Now it's just a Section 8 apartment complex. But it was cool to kind of take in, take in that aura, um, saw Madison Square Garden, did, you know, did all the New York things and then uh, caught COVID on my way back. So it was <laughs> it was a fantastic time. Off. Obviously, Damn. and uh, had my wallet that, stolen. Had my wallet yeah. stolen out there too. It was just a, it it's was, the highlight oh, of your summer. It was the highlight yeah. of my summer. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Um, you but, never uh, got it back. Uh, never did. I was. I got my license. Uh, I had had to request a new license. Unfortunately, I got it the day before the charter left. And if I didn't, oh, it was going to be. We we're going to figure out some things. But I fortunately, it all went the out. plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I was going to be hiding in your luggage. Yeah, I would have had, had an extra bag. I got screened. So yeah, that, yeah, that, that wouldn't have worked out. That wouldn't have worked. worked out this time but that's awesome very nice so it, was that your first time going to new york no it wasn't but it was my first time spending that much time there and really nice. soaking it in so yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah. are you going back oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah i had too much fun beamer like is just, yeah yeah beamer is is yeah you might have lost game one maybe game two will go yeah. better for you exactly, <laughs> we'll exactly. it's give you funny try. though like when when the not to call it any names of the older sports writers that cover this team but like <laughs> thinking of that like so that you know that game, it's, it's you know it's actually in New Jersey, and I just find it funny how there's some people on this beat that don't try to go to New York yeah. every time. Like mm. I always am like when I get tired of like trying to go to New York when we go there for like especially that year when they played the Giants and Jets both in in Jersey. I was like, well, I got to go over there. Like I saw, um, like earlier in the day before they play that the Giants to open it, the Yankees have a home game, and there's part of me that's like, man, yeah. I should try and make it over there. I don't know if it's doable, but yeah. 
I just always try and get over there for. I don't know that I'd want to live there, but yeah. visiting is great. Absolutely, I agree. I, I agree. I'm with you 100. percent Just walking around, it's it's incredibly fast paced, yeah. and if you can keep up, it's fun. But oh, yeah. as far as living there, I'd have to I'd have to think about it. It'd have to be a hard <laughs> it, thought. It would have to be a, a big thought. big opportunity to <laughs> exactly. make make that the, happen. The best way that I I just I, I could explain to somebody the very first time I ever went there when I got off of the subway, yeah. I felt like you were in a car merging into traffic to try and just start walking with people. Like you're exactly. just like, all right, are we getting in? Are we getting, okay. Go. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Got to make a signal, get in there. Yeah. I spent my freshman year at Allen high school. And if anyone's familiar with Allen and how many kids oh, they yeah. try to jam pack into those hallways, it gave me a lot of PTSD walking off that subway for the first time. Oh, so wow. that yeah, was, <laughs> that was the best way wow. I could explain it. <laughs> no, I, I don't even want to really imagine that. Honestly, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Speaking of New York, I guess that leads into to my biggest thing this summer. Got married. Of course, Let's we've go. talked about that on, on Talking Cowboys before. I told my wife, Lorena, as we were leaving, I, I told her, I was. she was like, the first thing you need to say on air is that you love me. And I was like, okay, I will. I'll tell you. So I love you, Lorena. There you go. <laughs> so now that, that that's out of the way, let's talk some Cowboys. Let's definitely do that. Uh, real quickly, first impressions from practice number one. We'll take a break here in a minute. We might continue this conversation. But, John, when you were looking at practice yesterday, definitely a lot to take in I felt like they didn't waste any time they only have the 12 practice sessions 10 of which are padded and certainly practice one was right off to to a hot start yeah and there's a part of me that I wish coach wouldn't do that because again I love the social media aspect and when they were doing some of their tempo stuff it's like I don't have enough time to tweet these videos yeah. and get to the next one I get I get they're doing it for conditioning but I wish he would care a little bit more about, <laughs> about, your, so, about your tweeting um, the engagement needs to be there the two things that that's out most to me would be one is that the Simi Fajoko tip pass that mm -hmm. Eric Scott ended up intercepting. And only reason why that stands out is because that was an issue last year. Yep. So if you see it, you can kind of be like, oh, is this going to happen all over again? Which it's just one practice. It's not that big of a deal, but, you know, we tend to, in our business, sometimes overrate things. No doubt. And, and speaking of that, like, and I don't want to oversell this because that is such a training camp thing to oversell wide receiver. Um but I just, I really thought Jalen Tolbert looked good. Like, he yeah. just looked like he was really sure of himself, was in the right spots, like, uh, you know, made the catches that they were there to make. And, I, you know, obviously a lot of eyes are going to be on him during during this camp. And I just thought he had a, a really great start first day. That's huge. Yeah, I think Jalen Tolbert was probably the biggest standout just because of what he had to face last year, both mentally and on the field. And, and this season, you can really tell that he's starting to find that extra gear and find that extra switch, building chemistry with Dak Prescott, both on and off the field. And, you know, we were able to see that early on. And, and seeing that early on can only give you hope about what's to come. So uh, I actually wrote about it in one of my practice points yesterday on DallasCowboys.com. Y'all can go check that out. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, the, the receiver group overall just had a fantastic day yesterday. Like, even Simi Fajoko, aside from that one, one tipped pass he had a good day it was just very unfortunate that his worst moment was probably the team's worst moment yesterday the thing I always have problems with that too not problems but it just it, you kind of have to adjust to is like okay so do you sit there and talk about how bad of a play that was or do or then you got the Eric Scott side of it that's obviously a yeah. big play for Absolutely. a young corner to make so you want to be sure you know I mean you got to be in the right place at the right time and and he's He's the guy that has been doing that. That was such an interesting play because I agree. There's there's almost three levels to it. Is interception, of course, that's a quarterback stat. And everybody's been looking at that quarterback stat, especially with Dak Prescott this offseason. 15 interceptions last year. It's been a notable talking point, and it should be based off of the year, and Dak would even say so, that he had in 2022. But it was a good throw from Dak. So the next storyline is Simi Fajoko. Why didn't you catch it? It's a drop. It's a tipped ball that ended up going up into the air. If you're going to drop it, at least drop it toward the ground and at least try and make some sort of effort to not allow it to be intercepted. And Dak even, with, with the trip out to the, the East Coast and to even have that, that mentality, he's talking about, I don't want to have tipped interceptions. I don't want to have that thing in the air, that ball in the air, after it hits my, my receiver's, receiver's hand. So you're trying to get on the same page. Why does that not happen in that specific moment? And then the third storyline would be Eric Scott Jr., young corner who a lot of people have their eyes on as well because they traded up to go get him. You saw what De'Ron Bland did last year in the same scenario as a day three mid-major cornerback that comes in and has an impact and ended up leading the team in interceptions after a great camp. Eric Scott Jr. has got a little bit of that expectation too. So there's three ways to look at it. And I think really the, the, the fourth way would just be let's not over oversell this thing. Let's not get too carried away because – 
I mean, it was a great throw. Simi had a better day outside of that uh, that that most people will talk about. And then on the third aspect of it, Eric Scott Jr. had a PBU two plays later where he broke a pass away. Uh, I believe it was dirt, and then he bro- broke the pass up with. So, I mean, overall, all three of those guys had solid days yesterday to start things off. Now, I do want to talk more about Jalen Tolbert. So when we come back on the other side of the break, Tolbert as one of the leading – at least attention getters here in the early parts of camp. Is this uh, too early to, to say he's in the lead for that wide receiver four spot, or could he potentially just be getting started as a former top 100 pick? When we come back with more Talking Cowboys. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at BankofAmerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app only available on select mobile devices message and data rates may apply member fdic they say champions are remembered but legends are never forgotten united ag and turf offers a winning lineup of john deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field legendary john deere tractors combines residential mowers commercial mowers compact construction equipment gator utility vehicles and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment united ag and turf the official ag and turf equipment supplier of the dallas Cowboys. Boys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to Talking Cowboys. Welcome back to Talking Cowboys. You can go get a free workout in the in during the summer sweat sessions at the Star, powered by Cowboys Fit. Come out for a cardio dance party on Wednesday, August 2nd. That sounds right up john's alley from 6 to 7 p.m outside on tostitos championship plaza visit the star district.com slash events for more info the summer sweat sessions that actually a, a dance party sounds nice they should have that out here i, I had a summer sweat session yesterday i wore dress <laughs> pants and it was 82 degrees i was told there would be a breeze that did not happen you so. wore dress pants i oh, did you did i did it was and a black it, yeah, shirt. It was it was tough work yesterday. If oh. you see me on training camp live, I was I was you were, battling. You were hot. I was battling. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because my very first training camp practice, I did the exact same thing. Here we are. Though, exactly. Here we are. Too, it's the right of passage. I, I had to dress up. I need exactly. to dress up. I want to make sure you I look see good. See me today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different feel. Yeah, yeah. And and for those of that are back in Texas that are laughing at us right now, and they're like, "You're not in 104 degree heat. You're able to go outside, and it doesn't feel like you're in a hair dryer." I agree, but it is Fair. still hot at times. Especially Especially the sun. If you want, you want to ask anybody. Consult my forehead on how hot it gets out here. It, it does still get hot. I guarantee it. All right. Speaking of getting hot, Jalen Tolbert seems to be getting hot at the right time. You see what I did there, Nick? Bang. The 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 rookie year for Jalen Tolbert. No secret. It was underwhelming significantly. And and I think for for everybody that was around him watching film once the draft happened. They expected him to come in and possibly be the number three receiver as a rookie. But, John, that didn't happen. Instead, he's he's taken a new approach, it seems like. He talked to Nick Eatman at the Senior Bowl. He had a great interview there. Talked about how the mindset needs to change, and it looks like it has. But he's starting to show it in training camp already through just one practice, the same way he did in the summer with OTAs and minicamp. I think he's he's – on the right track to possibly take that number four spot. And as a a former third-round pick, do you think he has the edge? Yeah, I do. And I think not only is he doing all the right things and saying all the right things, like this is – 
with with certain players, like I, it's not like every single guy says the right thing, does the right thing, is doing the right preparation. There's certain things that and I'm not going to name any players' names over the years covering the team, but there's certain guys where you're just like, I, I wonder how serious this player is even taking this. And that's not the case with Jalen Tolbert yeah. at all, and and that goes back to you know OTAs and minicamp, just when you're around him, talking to him, and then obviously during that portion between that ending and then training camp starting, you see he's out there with Dak, he's working out you know as much as possible, trying to be uh, you know a sponge and and I, for me personally, from what we do, I just really liked how he owned up to it. You know that hey, it wasn't like trying to. There's just some guys that will try and act like it's oh, you know, you guys are just hating. I mean, it's like no, I mean, it was there. You you didn't really make that big of an impact, and he totally owned up to it. And so, the mindset absolutely seems to be there. And again, the way that he started out yesterday, I just think it's a great start for him. So yeah, absolutely, I think, you know, that, that number four spot right now, I think it's up between you know him and him and Simi Fioko and. The other part of it is that when you take a guy in the third round, you're going to give that guy every opportunity to, to try and win that job. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you mentioned um, him just kind of finding a different level of maturity. I, I think that's that's probably what, what we see most whenever we talk to Jalen Tolbert. That's what we hear most out of him. And you could tell it in OTAs for sure. You know, he was on the same page. It, it seemed like he was talking to more guys in the offense and just uh, another la- level of understanding. And I also think Mike McCarthy taking over as play caller, kind of allowing him to just reset completely, I, I think that really benefits him the most just because of how disappointing – his his rookie season was and he would even tell you that so being able to come in with a fresh system a fresh mindset fully healthy uh you know getting on the same page with your quarterback that can only help him and and after practice one he's the guy so you know as, as far as we can tell he's the guy right now what is real like what is a realistic expectation for for Tolbert specifically because if he does win the wide receiver four spot let's let's assume that he's in a rotation I mean, in an offense where there is Michael Gallup, there is Brandon Cooks, who he has been wor- working with significantly, and he's latched on to. Uh, that's what Brian Schottenheimer told us and told the media after OTAs were over. But it, there's there's three names with Michael Gallup, Brandon Cooks, and, of course, C.D. Lamb that are going to get some some targets, that are going to get that those reps. But if, if he does win that number four spot, does he need to be an impact player, or what is that expectation there? Well... If you say that those first three are going to stay completely healthy, mm. then the expectations probably can be a little bit lower because just the touches aren't going to be there, the opportunities aren't going to be there. But I mean, there's going to be opportunities for him because even if let's say a guy isn't lost for you know the season or something like that, there's going to be times in games where a guy gets dinged up, and if you're that number four receiver in today's NFL, I mean, you got to be preparing like almost you're a starter. Sure. Uh, there's just going to be so many opportunities there for you, so. I mean, yeah, as they sit here today, I mean, they would love that. Yeah, you know, we, we needed Jalen, but we didn't need him a ton because those top three guys never got hurt. You know, that's – yeah, you'd hope for that, but let's be realistic here. Kind of reminds me of Cedric Wilson a little bit. For sure, bit. Cedric Whenever, Wilson, yeah. Noah Brown. There's always been a guy that, yeah. you know – and then the way the NFL keeps going – it's going in that direction. You need four or five quality wide receivers. What's a good season for him? 200, 250? 1,500 yards? No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he'd be, he'd be uh, a comeback player of the year exactly. if, he, if he did something like that. Yeah, that's a good question. If he, if he hits 20 receptions. Yeah. I agree. Honestly, yeah. and the yardage will come. I mean, if you have 20 receptions, you're probably going to have 200-something yards. Three at that touchdowns point. probably. Three or four yeah. touchdowns. If, if he can make an impact, from a, a reception standpoint, because you also got to throw the tight ends into the mix as well. I mean, the expectations for this offense is they want to run the ball, but this is an offense that right now, in terms of the talent, is set up to throw it. For yeah, sure. I mean, the, you, you've got so many receivers. You have these young tight ends that you want to unleash at some point as well. He's going to have to find those receptions somewhere. So I would think 20, 25 receptions would be a solid year That'd for Jalen Tolbert. And then, of course, it's that. You know, I'm, people go back to that play in Green Bay. You know, you yeah. got to be in the right spot. Yep. Can't line up offsides, things like that. That, you know, it just has to be fundamentally sound. Yep. And if that happens, I think everything else will kind of take care of itself. Yeah, no lapses in discipline and and just doing your job. I think that's that's all you can do as a wide receiver for too. Well, you also look at what he did last year. I mean, he had what two receptions? I think for yeah. twenty nine yards. yards, nine yards. That's what it was. Yep. Two receptions for nine yards. Simi Fajoko had three receptions for, uh, I think it was eighteen yards total. So. Either one of those guys bringing production to your offense as a whole is going to elevate things for for Dak Prescott. And we kind of talked about the defense a little bit earlier, but I think with this defense being as good as they are and with uh, with it being one of the tops in the NFL, a lot of eyes are on the offense to try and match that energy. Do you you have a specific expectation? I hate to keep asking about expectations, but 
do you have an, do you have some for the offense on what they could bring to the table to try and match what the defense has done these last two years? I mean, and maybe not me, even stats, but just yeah. the cleanliness with Mike McCarthy as play caller and Dak trying to take care of the football. For sure. I mean, changing stuff up as long as everyone's on the same page should benefit the entire offense. You know, obviously losing Ezekiel Elliott uh, and Tony Pollard stepping into that spot, there's going to be a lot of questions about you know how he handles that and the success that he's able to have there they're going to obviously run the run the football um but for me i, I mean it's i know this sounds basic but it really is just like tell me if, this, if they're how healthy they're going to be mm-hmm. i mean that's it's just such a big part of the nfl injuries are such a big part and so you you look at all these playmakers that they have and you look at Dak prescott but really at the end of the day if, if you tell me that it's going to be musical chairs again on the offensive line i don't understand how anybody can expect you to be you know the best offense or one of the top five offenses if you just constantly always have a yep. new five that are out there i think i think people would really be surprised at the trickle down that would come if you could have those same five starting for an extended period of time mm-hmm. really just how many other things that would open up i mean don't get me wrong man covering like those 14 you know 16 teams they had great offensive lines of like but they they still most for the most part they stayed relatively healthy you were able to have some cohesion there and so i Offensive line kind of gets thrown, you know, especially this time of year in yeah. the back. But it's such a big key to it. If you can tell me that they're going to have that five, I think everything else falls into place. Is that your biggest area of concern, Nick, in offensive terms line. of the offensive line? Uh, as far as the offense in general? As far as the roster in general. Because I, I, I think for so. me it would be mine. I uh, would say so. Because, I mean, of course, Zach Martin not reporting. That's, that's a huge deal. But uh, that's going to work itself out, you would hope, at some point down yeah. the line. But the health, just the, the rotation that they've had is not something that is conducive to winning. And, and Mike McCarthy's even said that significantly yep. these last couple of years. So I think I look at it and I'm saying, okay, cornerback, check. We feel really good about the depth and the top end quarterbacks. Same thing with wide receiver. Running back, even without Ezekiel Elliott, I feel good about the running back room. But then you, you get to the offensive line and you got some questions. Yeah, and, and that's that's where I have a little bit of worry. Uh, me and you were talking about it yesterday. I think the key factor to uh, the entire offense being able to succeed is Tyron Smith staying healthy. Yeah, uh, because if if he gets hurt, then that throws everything in, in disarray. You know, it, you said if Tyler Smith gets hurt, I, we feel like there's a guy that can come in and be that replacement, and and you know, not play up to the level of Tyler Smith, but be able to play left guard and be all right. Uh, Terrence Steele, he went down last year. They were able to figure it out. So, uh, Tyron Smith going down, that's when you start moving a lot of guys around. That's when you start you know getting disrhythm and. I think that's that's going to be the key factor here. He hasn't played a full season in a while. I don't think he's played more than 10 games in a while as well. So uh, just being able to keep him on the field, especially as the season goes on, that's going to be really important. I'm interested, John, too. I mean, they've got three guys. You, you mentioned all three of them, Terrence Steele, Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, that are all tackles first. I mean, that's where they're comfortable playing. I wonder if Terrence were to go down or if Tyron goes down, if it just automatically sets off a domino reaction. And then the only two guys that are set in stone are Tyler Biotish at center and Zach Martin at right guard whenever he returns. So, I mean, I think either way, if, if one of those guys goes down anywhere, there might be some shifting in, in, involved regardless. Yeah, Terrence Steele going down would be interesting because, like, especially while we're out here right now, this is this is a big time of year for Matt Willetsko because if yeah, he can absolutely. show, hey, you can count on him then if Terrence Steele was able was you know was missing time or you had to move some things around you'd feel good about that but if you are, have questions about well let's go then that's where I think it goes back to what he said then it's musical chairs then Tyron Smith's going over to right Tyler Smith's going out to left yeah. you know and 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 you don't want that you want to be able to keep some continuity there I mean having all five healthy all season might be a little unrealistic but at least have three or four you know especially for a running game that's going to be you know needing to get in that rhythm very early on behind Tony Pollard and being able to have the same front five up there that's going to help uh, tremendously in that area oh man that offensive line worries me at times I mean because you have so much excitement around the guys that we were just talking about with with Jalen and even Michael Gallup who's looked good in in the the short amount of time that we've seen him coming back from injury and having that fully healthy offseason uh I think you, you need that offensive line to, to really step up and, and to be solid. Um, now, do you feel better about the depth 
at the offensive line this year? You mentioned Matt Willetsko, Josh Balls getting snaps at right guard. Do you feel better about the, the offensive line depth this time around than you did at the same point last year? I don't think I do. I don't think uh, I do either. I just need to – I just – again, that's one of the good things about being out here, and then the other part is just the preseason games that I know can be a beating for people sometimes. But there's just a lot of pieces on this team that have me looking forward to the preseason to get to see, you know – Josh Ball a little bit more in pads and Matt Let's go guys like potentially playing with the ones because you're not going to be throwing Tyron Smith out there in preseason no. games and I'm excited to see Awesome Richards yeah because oh, I think for for, sure. for somebody that I mean we've we've talked a lot about Let's go and Ball but I think Awesome Richards as a draft pick we we kind of forget about him and we will because they haven't put pads on yet right. uh, it's not significant enough to really say okay these trenches are getting great work in they're they're mostly working fundamental and footwork at the moment. But once they put the pads on, I hope he he starts to shine and starts to take a step forward. I keep giving the benefit of the doubt to Mike McCarthy, too, because of the fact that, you know, <laughs> if you're on Twitter, it seems like people want to write off Josh Ball or Matt Let's go because yeah. they haven't seen anything right away. But, like, if you look at his track, Mike McCarthy's track record in Green Bay, they found a lot of outstanding value in, like, the third, yeah, fourth, did. fifth yeah. rounds in the offensive line. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I'm just kind of – and the heck, I mean, since he's been with the Cowboys, that Terrence Steele was an undrafted guy. Yep. So because of this, I'm just like – you got to be kind of patient, you know, like it could click for one of these guys. And then all of a sudden you have a really good offensive lineman that you didn't have to, you know, invest a ton in. Um, but that's what that's been missing. They've been missing that piece to be able to step up. So maybe this is the off season or preseason, whatever that will let's go or ball step up. And I will say, I, I haven't seen much from him personally, but Steven Jones has talked up Chuma Yidoga at least twice in a public setting okay. before. So, you know, that might be a name from the front office to keep an eye on. Once we get pads on, I think we'll get a better idea too. For it's, real. So tough. And it's so even, tough. In the even yesterday, there, <laughs> yeah, was, no, there, was, absolutely. there was one point when Mozzie Smith was on his, on his backside at, at camp. And it's like, okay, Everybody's looking at it. Everybody's looking at Mahasi. They're like, why is he on his back? Like, there's no pads. Let's yeah. let's not get carried away just yet. Yeah. Now, he probably needs to stay up off the, the ground a little bit more. But <laughs> as a first-round uh, nose tackle that's, that's supposed to do that, I think he needs to get up a little bit. But, uh, man, I'm excited to see this offensive line fully healthy. Let's just let's put it out there in the air all season long. We're not going to have a single injury. We're going to make it work, okay? We're going to we're going to manifest this. But when we come back here on Talking Cowboys, we do need to talk about the guys who aren't healthy going into training camp and we did have a couple injuries here on day 1, maybe some updates coming here in a minute with Mike McCarthy, but we'll talk about what we know when we return with more Talking Cowboys. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Want to use the Cowboys locker room's favorite products? Check out the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites, plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word cowboys. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a soldier to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve.
Welcome back to Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. The schedule is set, and limited tickets for the 2023 Dallas Cowboys season at AT AT&T Stadium are available now. Do not miss your chance to see your Cowboys live at AT AT&T when they host the NFC East rival Eagles, Giants, Commanders, plus the Jets, the Patriots, the Rams, the Seahawks, and the Lions. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash tickets or SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Back here for the final segment of Talking Cowboys, episode one of the 23 season. Excited to be back, and I love doing the show every single year. Love talking to Cowboys Nation, and uh, we've got John Machota, we've got Nick Harris. Our next show, we will have Isaiah Stanback, so we're going to have the full crew up here for the first time. I'm Kyle Yeomans, and uh, we did get to see practice number one. We're, we're preparing for practice number two behind us. Us, but uh, we, we saw a pair of, of safeties go down for the Cowboys, Donovan Wilson, Israel Mukwamu. I mean, John, both of those guys were expected to do good things this year. Of course, Donovan Wilson got a brand-new deal, excited to bring him back, and then all of a sudden he, he may miss some time. But overall, how does this impact the safety room with both of those guys leaving in day one? Yeah, you don't want that, but I will say they're in a much better situation than they were three, four years ago. I wrote a story about how – not only not only did the Cowboys have like the lowest investment at the safety position in the division, it was the entire NFL. Yeah. And so they're more equipped now than ever. This is the best safety group since I've covered the team for sure. And so, I mean, it, it sucks to lose those guys. I think Donovan Wilson, it's being reported four to six weeks. Yeah. So we should be back for the opener, which is obviously that's, huge. The, yeah, it's the, that's the number one thing that, mm-hmm. you, that you care about there. Um, Mukwamu with with the hamstring I don't know the severity of that but I just feel like they're kind of in a good spot because of Marquise Bell who immediately jumped out in there and just you know and talking to people they're they're just very high on Marquise Bell and what he can do and so because you have you know J. Ron Curse already back there and you have Malik Hooker it just it sucks but it's a position where they can afford it a little bit more than maybe some other positions but yeah I mean this is the time of year when you just you hate to be out there watching practice. I know you guys are doing a show live. Yeah. Next thing you know, there's someone <laughs> there's someone on the cart. You just never want to see the cart, you no. know, because you never know the severity of it. You don't mm-hmm. know if it's something, you know, that could be just a couple of weeks or it's something that ends the season. And so, fortunately, it doesn't sound like it's anything like that. But, yeah, you, you don't want to lose anybody. Um, also, I need to add in there, we were just talking about this during one of the breaks, that this is the best that these practice fields have looked. So. Yeah. For anybody that's out there thinking like, oh, well, maybe it's just they're playing on some bad fields. That's not the case. I mean, yeah. I mean, these are top shape. There's been some times when I've been out here where I was like, man, it's kind of rough out here, especially after a fir- first couple of practices. These are the best the fields have looked, and you would rather the guys be this time of year be on grass yeah. too. I heard a rumor, just a rumor, but apparently somebody came in from that does World Cup pitch the the pitch for soccer they come in and and they've redone this whole field and so i mean for the most part it's immaculate out there we were i mean nick harris and i if you saw it on cowboys stories on the cowboys now app we're playing playing catch baseball wise you'll have to join us at some point we'll get i got an extra glove we brought (laughs) it don't worry you're good but uh but we were playing catch out there and it's it's almost like a, a a fairway or a green like it's incredibly taken care of so i agree with you i think that's a great point to add that these guys going down it's not because of the playing surface it's it's a legitimate thing but also i'm sure for these players it's it's that security blanket for themselves personally saying okay like we we can be steady and where we're putting our feet and where, and where we're doing this footwork and where we're going through these drills because sometimes if you are on an unse- uneven playing surface you, you don't get that same level of work in. I, I will say I think at least from the early impressions from these two injuries I don't think either of them are going to carry into the season so Good. you know getting getting experience for these guys in the depth of that room that can only help especially in the preseason you know we might see a guy that plays all four, all four quarters so you know a guy like Marquise Bell uh, that's this is going to be very valuable experience for him and being able to step in and you know, he's kind of a versatile defensive back anyway, so he could kind of fill in in multiple spots and have that experience. A lot of uh, comparisons whenever he was picked up last year as an undrafted free agent was J. Ron Curse. I mean, he's got some size to him. He's above six foot. He's, he's athletic. He can make the, the coverage plays like J. Ron can against tight ends. But can he come in and play that, that over-the-top safety look like we've seen from Donovan Wilson, that enforcer role where he's able to come down into the box every now and again? That's a good question. I think we got to find out a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, 
he'll get every opportunity now because even when those guys come back, they're going to be careful with them. Sure. And so if you're Bell, you got to be loving this opportunity to sure. run with the ones and get a chance to go against, you know, a, a really good wide receiver crew. Um, so, I mean, I don't know for sure, but he's going to get every opportunity to find out. And there's a lot of defensive backs in this room that are versatile. I mean, that's what Dan Quinn preaches, and I mm. think being able to kind of play into that versatility as much as possible, move in some guys that are more comfortable at nickel and maybe give them some safety time, again, it can only help in the long run. With Donovan Wilson signing the new deal, and then you have Israel Mukwamu, who, of course, is, is fighting for, for rotational purposes and fighting to try and stay on, on the roster and stay relevant. I mean, not that he was necessarily on the cut line. Who do you think needed – this camp more and and I'll even throw in a couple extra names a couple Michigan guys Jordan Lewis who will start the season on pup uh, the physically unable to perform list and then you've got Luke Schoonmaker the rookie second round pick at tight end uh, who will start with the NFI and, and dealing with a foot injury out of those four players Israel Mukwamu Donovan Wilson J- Jordan Lewis and Luke Schoonmaker who needed a full camp of work more to try and make an impact on this football team. I think we might have the same answer, but I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's not even close. Yeah. It's, it's Luke Schoonmaker. Wow. Okay, okay. Oh, so mine. it's a different that answer. That wasn't mine. Yeah, no. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, just because you don't have Dalton Schultz anymore, mm. and he, if he's out there for every single thing and uh, contributing and he's on the same page with Dak Prescott, he's got a chance to get a ton of, of playing time. And for the others, like for like Jordan Lewis, I just look at him as a guy that he's a veteran, like, it's kind of like the Zach Martin thing. I understand, like, you know, when you show up here and people are like, Zach Martin's not there, like, this guy's falling, and I'm just kind of sitting there, I'm like, guys, like, when it matters, he'll be here. It's not It's not just the money. I feel like it's also his bond with this team and stuff like that. Like, when the, when the games matter, he'll be here. Like, so that's kind of how I feel about Jordan Lewis. He's, he's a veteran, and, and everything, he'll figure everything out. But the Luke Schoonmaker thing just makes me think of, of Jalen Tolbert last year. You know, we, we were in the OTAs of minicamp. Dealing with, uh, I think it was a foot. Yeah, I think he had a little bit of a foot ailment. Yeah. yeah. And just, you, I don't know, when you're a rookie like that, and especially in a spot where, like, you can come in right away and possibly win a starting job, you know, that that that's a little bit of alarming. And then there's a little bit of an injury history there, too, with him. Um, and then I also think just because of the style that he is coming from playing in college, that it translates that if he's out here, I think he could hit the ground running, so. Mm. That's very valid, but I feel like the leash is a lot longer for Luke just because obviously he's coming in as a rookie, whereas Jordan Lewis, I feel like that leash is much, much shorter. Uh, you know, Deron Bland came in last year, wowed, wowed everybody, and, you know, now now there's a competition there. And, you know, Jordan needs to it needs to be on the field showing, showing his value. So uh, my answer would be Jordan Lewis just because I feel like there's a sense of urgency there now, whereas with Schoonmaker, I don't feel like the urgency really needs to be there necessarily. Granted, being able to come in rookie and, and win a starting job, definitely that would would be fantastic for him and this is his best opportunity to do that and the earlier he can get on the field is the best way he can so do you think jordan lewis i mean with the addition of of bland into the mix and then i mean there's no anthony brown at training camp this year either you you, you bring in another corner and eric scott jr do you think he he's at least on that that watch of i, I need to be on the practice field to to make this team and to, to continue talking to, about jordan lewis yeah to I, I think be, i think he's safe as far as making the team it's just as far as you know if deron bland gets that starting nod week one and he picks up right where he left off last year why do you fix it if it's not broken you know so i i, I think that's kind of how you look at it from a coaching staff perspective i don't think his roster spots in jeopardy by any means but his his starting job's definitely in jeopardy and john you talked about well scoot luke schoonmaker and, and getting off to a hot start i mean if he's if he's fighting for a a starting job against jake ferguson and peyton hendershot that's one thing but it sounds like from a veteran standpoint jordan lewis coming in he, he's fighting for a, a starting spot with a younger player than he is and so it's kind of an interesting one two one of them is the rookie trying to establish himself the the other one is the veteran trying to stay established so both of the answers are certainly valid I'm I'm, I'm kind of torn in, in the middle of it though because Jordan Lewis if he were playing at the level of Trayvon Diggs that's one thing and and having a bit of an injury and then he's going to be fine he'll come back that starting spot's his no matter what I don't I don't know if you can necessarily say he was playing that level of football that at, at the point where he got hurt I know he got hurt on an interception but uh, yeah going into it it was kind of an interesting timing of the whole deal so I would probably feel a little bit different about that if let's say Dan Quinn took a head coaching job this past off season. okay but because he's back I just he's been great with moving guys around using them in different roles 
And just with Jordan Lewis, I know that Dan Quinn's a fan of his. I, the way that he's able to use him sometimes as a blitzer, I just find like, yeah, with obviously if Bland keeps playing well, you're going to have him out on the field. But I just I find it, I feel like Dan Quinn's going to find a way to get Jordan Lewis on the field if he's healthy. He's a savvy veteran. He'll use him in, in some different packages. But no question what you said is, is I completely agree with on the – if Durant Blank keeps playing like this, you can't take him off the field, and that will cut into Jordan Lewis's playing time, absolutely. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just a bigger Jordan Lewis fan than others. But I just <laughs> I think I just think he's he brings like intangibles that um, you know in the locker room on the field, and then he just can do a variety of things, um, not just as as a DB, but also you know playing downhill and stuff like that. So uh, I think that there'll be some type of a role for him. Yep. It'll be certainly interesting. Now, before we wrap up on our first Talking Cowboys, we'll be back on Monday, by the way, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Central time. Isaiah will join us. I want you to give me one player to watch, one player you're watching on the field, non-starter in training camp that I want everybody that's listening to go and do their homework on. It's funny because if they were about to be in pads, the very first person I was going to say was Mozzie Smith. Oh, of course. <laughs> because, That's everybody. Because doing these shows and writing, <clears throat> writing stories about this team, it's your first-round pick, and everybody wants to know, what's the first-round pick look like? What's the first-round pick look like? Well, when you don't have pads on, it's hard to really evaluate yeah, yeah. the defensive tackle. And then the other part is that you were hoping that Zach Martin would be out here going against him. Um, and, and maybe that will eventually happen sooner than later. But of a non-starter... I'm, I hate to just go back to Jalen Tolbert, but that's just a player that coming in, I just I've really wanted to see how he fits in because I think he can have a pretty big role. Um, but, yeah, I, I, for me it's on the offense. It's, it's a, it's a Jalen Tolbert or it's any of those uh, running backs behind Tony Pollard. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to give you one on each side of the ball, and both are rookies. I'm going to start with DeMarvion Overshone, uh, just because the linebacking core, I feel like there's an opportunity for him yeah, there. He one. feels like there's an opportunity uh, to start there uh, wow. coming out of training camp. So uh, DeMarvion Overshone, you know, he's, he's got it. He's got it up here. And, um, you know, the coaches have loved what he's been able to bring to both the locker room and the field so far. So definitely a guy I'm keeping an eye on. And then uh, I know I said it in our Camping Out podcast, but Jalen Moreno Cropper, I think that is a guy by the end of training camp we're going to start factoring in to uh, – some conversations so um he's he's had a lot of production at fresno state uh, fresno state has obviously produced some fantastic receivers in the nfl i think i think he's going to be the next in line he had a great catch over here fun, yeah day, phenomenal yeah. day one i was yeah. about to say you, you, you check the boxes yeah. on on day one yeah. uh to get that done by the way chris beam had a phenomenal shot of he that. did he, in the end zone <laughs> it's on <laughs> dallas cowboys social got Little a pub beamer in the back he's not just a podcast man he's a cameraman too <laughs> yeah. he does it all but yeah no it was a phenomenal Phenomenal catch, dragged both feet. It was no question. Yeah. Touchdown. We went under further review of Chris Beam's phenomenal shot. It was a grab. So, yeah, uh, yeah. excited to see what Jalen Moreno Cropper. It seems like every year there's an undrafted free agent wide receiver that emerges. Last year was Dennis Houston. Yep. This year might be Jalen Moreno Cropper. Uh, I'm going to stick with with who I said at, in the Camping Out podcast. Both of these guys had great day ones. Eric Scott Jr., who had the interception, had a couple PBUs. Uh, as a rookie, I just think he has those intangibles. He has that that athleticism that Dan Quinn loves. Um, and I think even if he doesn't necessarily find his way into the corner rotation, I think he'll be an impact player on special teams. And then on the offensive side, I'm looking at tight end John Stevens from Louisiana Lafayette. He's an undrafted free agent. They call him Stretch. And there's there's two reasons for that. He's got some size. He's, he's above 6'3". But then he's also he can stretch the field a little bit, so they call him stretch within the the, uh, the locker room. So keep an eye on John Stevens to, to see what he can do going into year number one. But that's going to do it for episode one of Talking Cowboys here in 2023. Be sure to join us on Monday for our next episode. For John Machota, Nick Harris, I'm Kyle Yeomans, and for Chris Beam running things in the back. We'll see you on Monday for more Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?